that I agreed to celebrate Mass today. But for a reminder, we <laughs> will say Mass to us. I was staying with the Jesuit community attached to the Chiesa di Gesù della Casa Professa. That tourist attraction, beautiful church, the, beauty, the tourist attraction is a wonderful example of Baroque design. You should see it. But many are not aware that there is an elevated chapel behind the main uh, nave. It is called Capella del Salvador. It was a venue often used by the Congregation of the Cross and Martyrdom of Christ in many of their collective discernment meetings in early 1900s, like the one you're doing now. But one thing that struck me there was the circle of statues of women. Everywhere. Statues of women representing great and noble virtues. Of course, there is a statue of a woman for the virtue of prudence. There is a statue for mercy, misericordia. There is a statue for purity and innocent, inno innocence. But the very first virtue that you enter from, you see on the left side, there is the statue of the woman representing the virtue of sagacitas, sagacita, or sagacity. Uh, I heard about that, but that's not very clear. I felt like that virtue should speak aloud to us today, especially when we need to discern where the Lord is leading us in these confusing Sagacity comes from the French sagacité, which in turn is derived from the Latin sagacitas, or quickness of perception. You can look at the situation and you grasp the, the meaning, the value of the situation. Many people associate sagacity with political intelligence of detecting where power lies and choosing the right strategies for maneuver. But it is not only true in politics. Sagacity touches on personal and even spiritual maturity that allows us to see beauty even in ugly situations. Sagacity, therefore, is the quality that makes a person a sage. Pope Francis defined sagacity as the readiness to grasp <coughs> and confront situations with shrewdness and creativity. Again, sagacity, according to Pope Francis, he has a list of virtues. One of them is sagacity. It is the readiness to grasp and confront a difficult, complex situation with intelligence, but at the same time, creativity. <laughs> so, if the situation is difficult, the person with sagacity appreciates the difficulty, but does not surrender. The person of sagacity thinks creatively what can be done in this kind of situation. Sagacity, further, according to the Pope, entails personal effort aimed at acquiring the necessary, the necessary <laughs> requisites for exercising as best we can our tasks and duties with intelligence and insight. So it requires personal effort to acquire whatever is necessary to form good judgment. But sagacity for a Christian goes further. In the Gospel today, Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees with the question of divorce. Well, the question of divorce is too complicated for this one. 
And Jesus answers, that is the important thing. Jesus answers them. Have you not read that in the beginning the Creator made them male and female? So they are no longer two but one body. Let no one separate what God has joined. So the question is because it's complicated, but let me focus first on the tone of Jesus' voice. When he, when he said, have you not read? What is the tone of Jesus? It's like Jesus saying, can you not see? Can you not see? Don't you have the mind of the Lord? Can you not see the point of God? For blessing areas. Don't you have that insight on how God works in human life, in human history? And to the exasperation of Jesus, even the disciples were at a the loss. They said, if that is the case, then it is useless to get married. And then Jesus said, imagine Jesus stretching out his patience. You are my disciples. Don't you see? <laughs> Until now you don't see. Don't you have insight? Don't you have wisdom? Have you not heard of the word sagacity? <laughs> now this virtue is so challenging that there is actually a whole new journal, a whole new journal called sagacity. Journal of Theology and Christian Education. It's an international journal called Sagacity. According to the journal, Sagacity is the capacity for astute and sound judgment. It is a kind of thinking that involves engagement with human existence. So it's not just thinking inside the library. It is a kind of thinking that emerges when you involve yourself in the world with honest intelligence, with creativity, purpose, and integrity. Without that kind of intelligence, then our decisions will be based simply on impulses. Oh, I was hurt. Oh, I saw poverty. So let's do this. No, sagacity is the astute engagement with human existence and human experience that can boast. It. This is the function of sagacity. It, it can test the ideas, previous ideas, our beliefs. It can test that with purposeful activity and modify previous tendencies through thoughtful reflection. So with the kind of self penetrating wisdom, insight, we can test our beliefs, we can test our things, and even have the capacity to modify some of these institutions. But to this, uh, sorry, it's a bit heavy, but I would still add something more. <coughs> I would like to add that today, more than ever, sagacity must also involve consulting data of human experience. This means appreciating and integrating the results of even secular research and findings about the situation of humankind. So we derive insight from experience, but if we are serious, we should also consult the results of some empirical research. One example of the set of data that we need to pay attention is the Global Risks Report. I read that this for you. <clears throat> the Global Risks Report 2020 Insight Report. It tells you what is really deeply concerned uh, and bothers people all over the world. According to this 2022 report, 41.8% of 
50% of the global population has a very dark and green outlook on the next three years. So this is survey and the feeling of the people, almost half of the people, feel that there is darkness in the next three years. 37.4% fear of fractured societies dividing the world into winners and losers. So fractures, division. There's fear of more division. When, when the people were asked to identify the most severe risks on a global scale over the next 10 years, people answered, what? Climate change action failure. So it's not just climate change, but the failure to respond. Extreme weather conditions. In the Philippines, we have an average of 23 storms a year. Floods. Not to mention volcanic eruption and earthquakes. Biodiversity loss. Infectious diseases, debt crisis. So many countries today are in debt. They will run to China for cash. So that's dangerous. Thank God, Pope Francis has crafted the that to seek for this engagement. We could almost hear the Lord speaking through this in various other reports. Don't you see the signs? Don't you hear the voice of the Lord in these reports? Now, if we take these and other reports seriously, then we can probably expand our interpretation of the Lord's concern for the unity of the family beyond the divorce issue. The Lord's dream is a sense of being one family, protecting the earth as our common home. In the same global risk report, the top problems left by COVID-19 are number one, erosion of social cohesion, fragmentation. So if we are worried about divorce, all the moment we should worry about erosion of social cohesion in societies, division among genders, division among the rich and the poor, division among ethnic groups, migration, immigration, livelihood crisis, and mental health deterioration. So it's all in the report. This fragmentation, this erosion of one family of family is made worse by technology, digital inequality. So you have many friends in Facebook, but you realize you have made more enemies as well. People get easily get angry easily in Facebook. Death crisis and even the threat of military confrontation between the remaining superpowers of today. You, Russia is in Ukraine and China is attacking Taiwan, very near to us, and we are at the brink of war. So when, when Jesus is concerned with the uniting the family, avoiding divorce, Nowadays, we need to to think about other kinds of divorces, other kinds of divisions, and fragmentation of the world. Thank God again for Pope Francis' encyclical Fratelli Tutti, the three animates of authentic dialogue and about better politics for today's fragmented, pandemic infested, infected world. Now the question again. How much of these sets of data and church teachings inform our deliberation and discernment? So before I end, let me go back to the chapter of the virtues. I realize that next, very next to the statue of sagacity is the statue of fortitude. What is fortitude? 
Thank you. 